in this lecture you will understand the vestigial sideband modulation vestigial sideband modulation or vsb modulation is a technique which allows the transmission of one sideband in addition with the part of a vestige of the other sideband it is basically a compromise between dsb sc and ssb sc modulation and it is a form of amplitude modulation that reduces the bandwidth required for transmission while preserving the most of the original information in the traditional amplitude modulation, the modulating signal is used to modulate both upper and lower sidebands symmetrically around the carrier frequency. However, in VSB modulation, one sideband is significantly attenuated or vestigial while other sideband is preserved. This allows for a more efficient use of available bandwidth. VSB technique was introduced to overcome the drawbacks of SSB modulation as SSB modulation requires accurate frequency response of the filter to transmit one sideband completely. So let us understand why we need VSB modulation. There are two main reasons why VSB modulation is used. Firstly, it enables more efficient utilization of transmission bandwidth unlike SSB, SC modula unlike SSB modulation which transmits the entire sideband containing only the half of the information. VSB modulation only transmits a portion of sideband, thereby freeing up the valuable bandwidth for other signals. The bandwidth conservation is one of the key advantages of VSB modulation. In SSB SC modulation, the ideal filter was required to eliminate the carrier and the unwanted sideband. However, it is impossible to design an ideal filter with infinite bandwidth and zero attenuation. This is because no guard band is available between upper and lower sidebands of the modulated signal. As a result, some of the unwanted sidebands will always be present in the SSBSC modulated signal. This is one of the main challenges of the SSBSC modulated signal. To overcome this challenge, some of the practical filters are used that have finite bandwidth and some attenuation. These filters are able to eliminate most of the unwanted sideband, but they cannot eliminate the sidebands completely. As a result, SSBSC signal will always have some distortion. In the phase discrimination generation of SSBSC modulation signal, the carrier signal is shifted by 90 degrees to generate the upper and lower sideband. However, it is impossible to achieve a perfect 90 degree phase shift in practice. This is because the carrier signal is not a perfect sinusoidal waveform and it is affected by noise and other disturbance. As a result, the phase shift will always be slightly off from 90 degrees. And finally, VSB modulation is less susceptible to interference from the other signal. This is because VSB sideband is still present which helps to improve the signal to noise ratio. So the advantages of VS VSB modulation include efficient use of bandwidth, improved signal to noise ratio at, as it con concentrates the transmitted energy in a narrower bandwidth effectively reducing the noise power outside the desired frequency range less susceptible to noise and interference, low generation cost method, VSB modulation is compatible with existing AM receivers. While VSB demodulation is complex than the standard AM demodulation, it is relatively straightforward compared to the other modulation schemes like QAM. This ease of implementation will be advantageous in the application where simplicity and cost effectiveness are important factors. While VSB modulation might require higher power compared to some other modulation technique like SSB or QAM, it can be more efficient than the standard double sideband AM due to the reduced bandwidth requirements. This can be advantageous in certain broadcasting scenarios. Now let's see some disadvantages of VSB modulation. VSB modulation is more complex than other modulation scheme and requires more careful tuning of transmitter and receiver. VSB modulation is typically requires higher transmission power compared to SSB and QAM modulation to achieve similar levels of information transmission. This increased power consumption can be a concern, especially in the battery operated devices or applications where power efficiency is crucial. VSB modulation is not widely used as other modulation techniques like SSB or QAM. As a result, there might be compatibility issues. Let's see the block diagram for the generation of VSB modulated signal. At first, the modulating signal MT and the carrier signal CT generated by the local oscillator is applied as an input to the product modulator. The product modulator multiplies the modulating signal with the carrier signal and produces a DSB SC modulated signal, namely YT. This DSB SC signal is passed through a VSB sideband filter. This sideband filter passes one of the sidebands of DSB SC signal along with the vestige of the other sideband. The amount of vestige is passed determined by the design of the filter. 
The output of the sideband filter is the VSB modulated signal Y prime T and VSB modulated signal is then multiplied and transmitted. The sideband filter is a crucial component of the VSB signal generation. The filter must be carefully designed to pass the desired amount of vestige from the other sideband. The amount of vestige that is passed will determine the bandwidth of the VSB modulated signal. Now let's see the mathematical analysis for the VSB modulation technique. Let's say modulating signal is equal to empty and carrier signal CT is equal to AC cos omega CT which can be written as AC cos 2 pi FCT. Now input to the product modulator is the modulating signal MT and the carrier signal CT and output of this product modulator is YT. So YT can be written as MT into CT and if we put the value of CT as AC cos 2 pi FCT then YT can be written as MT into AC cos 2 pi FCT. Now in the frequency domain this YT can be written as capital Y of F uh, by taking Fourier transform this YT will become capital Y of F and MT will become capital M of F. This multiplication sign can be replaced by convolution and AC cos 2 pi FCT will have the Fourier transform of AC by 2 del F minus FC plus del F plus FC. Now we can take this AC by 2 out of the equation as this is a constant then capital Y of F can be written as Y of F is equal to AC by 2 capital M of F convolution with del F minus FC plus del F plus FC. Now this convolution will result in capital M of F minus FC plus capital M of F plus FC. So capital Y of F can be written as Y of F is equal to AC by 2 into capital M of F minus FC plus M of F plus FC. Now the frequency response of the VSB sideband filter is equal to capital H of F. The output of this VSB sideband filter which is Y prime of F is the multiplication of the capital Y of F with the frequency response of the VSB sideband filter capital H of F. So output of this VSB sideband filter can be given by Y prime of F is equal to AC by 2 capital M of F minus FC plus capital M of F plus FC into capital H of F. Depending on the frequency response of this VSB sideband filter, we will generate the VSB modulated signal. Now let's see the generation of the VSB modulated signal graphically. So this is our message signal spectrum from the frequency minus W to plus W having the center frequency as FC. Now this is the VSB FC modulated signal spectrum and we can generate the VSB modulated signal from here which allows the transmission of one sideband in addition with the path or vestige of the other sideband. So if we want to transmit upper sideband and a vestige of the lower sideband signal then VSB sideband filter should have a response like this. And this portion uh, until the frequency FC from the frequency FC minus FV is the vestige of the lower sideband signal. And so the bandwidth of the VSB sideband filter is FC plus W minus FC minus FV which will result in FV plus W. If the VSB sideband filter has a response like this then the generated signal is lower sideband with the vestige of the upper sideband. And this portion until the frequency FC plus FV from the frequency FC is the vestige of the upper sideband signal. So by passing the DSB SC signal through the BSB sideband filter having a response like these we can generate VSB modulated signal. How to design this VSB sideband filter we'll see that in the incoming lecture. Here we have managed to transfer upper sideband signal and the vestige was in the lower sideband of the DSB SC signal. Here we also saw how to transfer lower sideband and the vestige of the upper sideband of the DSB SC signal alongside with it. Now let's understand how this VSB sideband filter functions by taking only the positive portion of the frequency response of the DSB SC modulated signal. So for this we will take the message signal spectrum again and the positive portion of the DSB SC signal spectrum looks like this. If we pass this through a VSB sideband filter like this then our generated VSB modulated signal will have the positive portion of the spectrum like this with the vestige of the lower sideband from FC minus FV to FC. So this VSB sideband filter can generate VSB modulated signal from the DSB SC signal. Now let's understand how this VSB sideband filter functions to generate the VSB modulated signal. Now this VSB sideband filter is a specially designed sideband shaping filter having the amplitude response of capital H of F. 
This specially designed sideband filter is constrained to a limited bandwidth ranging from the lower frequency of FC minus FB to the upper frequency of FC plus W. The frequency difference between the frequency difference between the upper frequency FC plus W and lower frequency FC minus FB of the specially designed sideband filter is known as the transmission bandwidth and it is equal to FC plus W. Here for this VSB sideband filter, amplitude with respect to the frequency FC is equal to 0.5 and amplitude with respect to the frequency FC plus FV is equal to 1. The vestige of the lower sideband or LSB or the portion of the lower sideband signal that is transmitted along with the upper sideband has an upper frequency of FC and a lower frequency of FC minus FV. With the help of filter like this, we obtain VSB modulated signal denoted by capital S of F where the upper sideband lies between FC and FC plus W and the vestige of the lower sideband lies between frequency FC minus FV and FC. It is important to observe that a portion of the upper sideband is missing due to the filtering operation of the VSB sideband filter and this missing portion must be compensated. So only requirement of the VSB modulated signal is that the lower sideband which is the vestige portion must compensate the missing spectral portion of the main sideband or upper sideband signal. To obtain this, the frequency response of the VSB sideband filter must satisfy a condition that is H of F minus FC plus H of F plus FC is equal to 1 for the frequency F greater than or equal to minus W to the frequency less than or equal to W. Here the first term represents the negative frequency part of the filter centered at frequency FC which is shifted to the right by the frequency FC. The term corresponds to the upper sideband or USB. The next term represents the positive frequency part of the filter centered at frequency minus FC which is shifted to the left by the frequency FC and this term corresponds to the lower sideband. By combining these two frequency components, the filter allows the vestige of the lower sideband to be transmitted along with the upper sideband and creating the VSB modulated signal. The vestigial transmission of the lower sideband helps to conserve the bandwidth while retaining the essential information making the VSB sideband modulation suitable for specific application, particularly in analog broadcasting such as television transmission. That's all for this lecture. We will see the demodulation of VSB modulated signal and the designing of the VSB sideband filter in the incoming lectures. This concludes our discussion for this lecture. In the event that you have any question regarding this presentation, feel free to post them in the comment section and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you in the next one.